So one of the first things people did like back in the 1970s, they had lots of waste heat from fuel cells. They would take that thermal energy and you would boil water and then run it through a steam turbine, get some more electricity out of it. But if you really want to squeeze out all the energy, let me show you the alternative to that. So this is something that was pioneered heavily by Westinghouse Corporation and then later by Siemens Westinghouse. They were thinking entirely about huge giant plants that would try to squeeze as much efficiency as possible out of everything. It's called a gas turbine combined cycle with an SOFC. And it basically looks something like this. If you'll remember from Chemi 325, let's say you want to run a heat engine. One of the things we concluded was you can get more work if the temperature difference between the high temperature reservoir and the low temperature reservoir, you want that difference to be as big as possible. So we've got the environmental temperature, which is the lowest temperature we have in our world. And then we're pulling heat out of a source, which we just talked about is like 200 C or 300 C, something like that. That is not that great a temperature difference. We're not gonna be able to squeeze very much work out of that no matter what we do. So the idea is we want to look at much higher temperatures. That's possible here because the SOFC is operating at way higher temperatures than 200 or 300 C. It's up at 800 C, 900 C in fact, in some cases. Why take the heat out down here at two or 300 when we could be up here at like 800? That's the idea of a gas turbine engine. Gas turbine cycles are a common way to produce electricity efficiently at large scale. Take natural gas, you burn in air, and then rather than boil water and run a stream steam turbine, as you're basically doing with a lot of coal-fired plants, you're, you're taking hot gases that you come from a combustor and you're feeding them directly into a turbine engine at really high temperatures. And then you have a big, big temperature drop as you go through the turbine engine system, you get much more electrical efficiency out of that. So why not combine that with a fuel cell? And that's basically this idea. So to blow this up a little bit, as you can see, we're basically taking the fuel cell, we have our afterburner, but then our exhaust, instead of just doing waste heat recovery from it, we first take that, the hottest gas that we have in our whole process, and we run it through a turbine engine. Uh, and then the temperature drops from the inlet to the outlet of the turbine, but not because we're cooling it, it's because we're pulling work out of it. One problem with that is stream six is at atmospheric pressure because it's going to go to exhaust. For there to be a pressure drop across our turbine engine, stream five not only has to be hot, it has to be under pressure. So our whole fuel cell has to be under pressure. The air coming into the fuel cell has to be under pressure, which means we have to compress it. So further upstream, we are taking air, which comes in at one atmosphere, and we're compressing it. The fuel also comes in under pressure. So if this is coming from a high pressure storage cylinder or something where this is already under pressure, and then we combine it with steam also produced at high pressure. So pressurized steam, pressurized fuel goes through a reformer, also running under pressure, feed the pressurized fuel and air into the fuel cell and burn it. Some of the work that we generate is used to drive the compressor. And these are normally attached to the same shaft and the turbine where you're generating work is also connected to the compressor, which is pressurizing the incoming air. And so what we end up with is a lower temperature exhaust because we're gonna come out hot in stream five. We're actually reducing the temperature first at the engine. And then we're using the exhaust, which is now lower than it would have been if we hadn't removed work from it. And then that's what's used to preheat the in the reformer and the heat exchanger. So we're, we're bringing the temperature between 15 and 13 much closer, and we're bringing the temperature between seven and three much closer. So these heat exchangers are much more efficient because the delta T between the gas streams is much smaller. The rest of this is very similar to the other spreadsheet. The only difference is we've added some additional calculations associated with the turbines and compressors. I'm gonna skip most of the details of that, you guys remember that turbine engines and compressors operate to first approximation isentropically if they're very efficient. They're not perfectly efficient, but we put in some efficiency numbers here, a 93% efficient for the turbine, 85% uh, compressor efficiency. Those are fairly typical numbers for this type of equipment. And that determines the maximum amount of work that we can get out of the turbine engine and the, the minimum amount of work that we have to put into the, into the compressor. 
So I've set this particular spreadsheet up with the same conditions that we were just looking at. We have 750 at the fuel cell outlet and I have 550 in the fuel cell inlet. And the rest of this is kind of very similar. In this case, I've set the pressure at three and a half atmospheres, which is kind of a typical number that people have used in this, in this industry. Kind of the compromise between work recovery and just the cost of having everything inside a the pressurized vessel starts to become expensive when the pressure gets too high. So here we're producing, here's our electrical work, 432 kilowatts. If we look also at the engine, how much power is produced by the turbine minus the amount of power that we're using at the compressor, it's about 200 kilowatts. And so that brings our HHV efficiency up to something more like 70% if we could actually do it. So if I have a little system and I just build it with some heat exchangers, I can get 50% efficiency. I go and build the most efficient, super expensive, awesomely fancy gas turbine combined cycle system that's gotta be hundred megawatts before you could even think about paying for it. Um, you can get 70%. So yeah, it's better, but the, the scale on which you have to do it is also tremendously larger. If you're trying to you know, build fuel cells for a market where people are actually going to buy them and actually make them and actually use them to incrementally improve efficiency, um, this may or may not be a very important thing to try to pursue. People are thinking much smaller. Let's build things that are appliance size, things that people can put in their houses, things that they can put into a vehicle. We don't get 70%. We're only going to get 50%, but that's better than we're doing today.